Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today's video will be focusing on uh, something completely different to the normal. That is my, uh, another passion of mine that is, that is anime and manga. I am a big anime guy. I've only been watching and reading for about six months, but I've, I've read and watched a fair bit. Uh, well, a fair bit in comparison to some people, in comparison to others, nothing at all. Uh, and I plan to do a more in-depth video about what I've watched and more other bits and pieces like my manga collection. I've got not a ton, but I've got some interesting stuff there that might be worth talking about. But before that, I thought I'd talk about something else, namely my CD collection. Now, I don't have many CDs, but the ones I have are kind of intriguing. And because I never see these really discussed or talked about at all uh, on YouTube, I thought it'd be interesting to do a bit of a deep dive. So, these are all CDs from the show City Hunter. This was a show produced in the 80s, uh, and 80s with some specials, and I think a one season in the 90s. Um, a lot of stories short, it's about a horny guy who can't get any bitches. Uh, who's, he's also very good with a um, 3.57 Magnum. So, yeah. It, it, it sounds less cohesive than it is, but... You know, you get what you get with anime from this period. Uh, I actually fell in love with it. It was one of the first shows I watched when I was getting back into it. I mean, I watched anime in high school, nowhere near as much. And when I got back into it a little bit, well, this year, this is one of the first shows I went, I want to watch it. And it was on Crunchyroll, and I went, I'll knock myself out. And 130 episodes later, and I enjoyed pretty much all of them. I think it's 130. It, it's some pretty high number between... Four seasons, and I, I can't remember, it must be at least five to seven specials. I can't, um, hold on. Well, I've got four there. It must be seven specials. Um, well, I may be wrong. Don't, I don't come after me for that. But, I really fell in love with it, especially the music. The music was astonishingly good. I mean, I've now compiled music for two other shows from the period, namely Kimiguri Orange Road and Cat's Eye, and they don't come close. This show just is perfect when it comes to music. So the CD in front of you is City Hunter, the original animation soundtrack volume 2. Now with these CDs I tended to just go after what wasn't available readily on YouTube, SoundCloud, SoundCloud or Spotify. So you may ask, why buy this? Because Volume 2 is actually on Spotify. But, it's missing the first two, it's missing two tracks. Namely, um, that one which is Go Go Heaven, and that one, it's number 6. Which for reference, just so we're all on the same page with this stuff, those ones, just so I can, let's try to remember the name. Um, hold up. Uh, that would be Owari no Nai uh, Katamuki, which I don't know if I'm saying that right, and I'm sorry I'm going to butcher Japanese throughout this whole episode. But, um, it's one of the more common CDs anyway. I paid about 40 for this. Um, I don't use Japanese auction sites for these. I tend to just buy on eBay. Sometimes I get burnt, sometimes it's good deals. And this one wasn't too bad. I mean, by the time fees and everything, I probably would have paid about that. Included in the package is CD and booklet. We'll have a look at the booklet in a second. I can't remember what year release this is. I can't recall if it's a re-release. Well, I guess we'll have a look in the thing. There's your CD. Let's see my camera, and if I move over here, my stupid face. Um, not really anything going on with the CD. This is a epic Sony release. Um, let's look at the booklet. Oh, that's right. You have a different cover in here too, I think. Oh no, these are stickers. Sorry, you have the stickers. Which is kind of neat. I think they think they're stickers. Yeah, they must be. They got this weird yellow card back, so I think that's what they are. 
Someone circles them here. Just in pencil. Not really much exciting here, just lyrics. Babe, I want your love. Babe, I want your love. Hold me now, I just can't get like, yeah, yeah, okay. No, no, some of them aren't amazing. But, you know, they're pretty nice. Never Go is always pretty cool. Shiny in a Cat Size, one of my favorite from the entire show. Uh, it's just an instrumental, but it really is quite beautiful. Footsteps is pretty nice. Uh, does this have. No. Yeah. I, like. It's not necessarily the most exciting one. I would say Volume 2 is probably one of the more. Eh. It's for the second half of Season 1. And really. I, I would say it, the music peaked Season 2. I mean, pretty much everything peaked Season 2. It was very, very good. Uh, but no, I just bought it for Go Go Heaven. That's the. um. Because that's not really available anywhere, weirdly. Um, not on YouTube, maybe on Spotify. Uh, but if anyone wants a copy, just uh, hit me up. Next up is Secret Service. This is the most common uh, of the, I would say, latter three um, specials uh, on CD. I see this, I've looked on Japanese auction sites and eBay, and you see this a fair bit. But I will say with the next three especially, buyer beware that you're getting the original Japanese press. These are pretty cheap if you get the Taiwanese bootlegs. I don't know quality wise of those, so I'm not going to really comment, but the Japanese ones are pretty good. Um, I just basically, what I do with these is because my <laughs> car only has a cassette player, I just rip these and then play them over a Bluetooth dongle I have. Why does my car only have a cassette player? It's because it's a 1992 Holden Nova. <laughs> Why else? Um, well, this is one of the more common ones. I'll have a bigger talk about the songs in a second, but I would say this is probably one of the better ones too, uh, in terms of like what you get, because you get a lot of vocals, and I think vocals are what really carries these CDs, or at least helps them make the, helps make them accessible. So for this you get 16 tracks, and I paid, I think, 70 or 80 for this, which is probably a bit too much. Um, granted, getting these outside of Japan is a bit tough, so I was happy just to buy it on eBay and just take the slightly higher cost. Um, that and this is actually complete. So let's have a look. When I say complete, I mean, if I open up the book, because this is where I store them, it had the Obi as well. Which was really nice to see. I didn't expect it. Um, also, it's just a it's just a great reminder of how expensive I think it's on here somewhere. CDs were back in the day. That's three thousand yen, which I mean converted to modern Australian, that's about thirty bucks. And bear in mind that's back in nineteen ninety six. I want to say yes, ninety six. Just playing on the other side. The booklet. There's some nice things going on in here. I actually, I actually think it's one of the better designed ones. As far as the movie itself goes, I'd probably say it's the last really great City Hunter movie. Granted, I do actually really like um, Goodbye, but this one just sort of seems to be the more accessible. Uh, and, and just the artwork in these is really good. This play again, just great artwork. I mean, we have to focus on that. It's just funny. Uh, I'll talk about the songs in a second. Come on, focus. Come on. There we go. And again, some of the artwork from this is just great. I mean, there's... Oh, focus, yeah. Like that shot, jeez. And as for the CD itself, it's probably one of the more, I guess... Not very exciting covers. Well, it's not very exciting designs as far as CDs go. You just got a green. 
Um, so this, yeah. I will say, it's probably, like I said, it's one of the better soundtracks, and there are some really solid songs in here. Let me pull it up for you. Uh, it would be listed under, I think I'm listed under Secret Service. Uh, where is it? Nope. So I'm just trying to find, I've got it, because um, I don't actually know most of the songs off the top of my head. Uh, here we are, City Hunter, The Secret Service. So first you've got Otherwise, which is the um, OP, which is very good. Um, it's one of the better OPs. It's just it's just batshit crazy, which works for City Hunter. Um, Guard M's Secret's pretty good. We Can Make It is a real standout. Um, that's a vocal track, and it's just, it's just really good. Um, Chase, Chase, Chase is a lot of fun. Battle Cruising is a lot of fun. Bond's a lot of fun in terms of instrumentals. Um, Woman, I always thought that was a weird closer. But, you know, it's it's alright. And then otherwise TV version. Which, you know, it's nice to have both. I, I do quite like having the shortened versions. Because otherwise you got to sort of rip them and it's a real pain. Either way, really cool. But now we get into the really, really cool CDs. Um, for those who know what this one is, you'll be very excited. But, next up is... Uh, goodbye, my sweet heart. Stylized that way. Again, it's a, it's a weird stylization of the CD of Goodbye, My Sweet Heart. Which I think works quite well in the context of the movie. Um, you also know, these ones have white. I don't know why that one has black. Uh, no real clue on that. All the songs are in English, so I can actually tell you pretty um, easily which is which. Opening it up. Oh. This one shipped to me with a slightly broken uh, middle, so I need to get a new case. But, again, you got a really basic design, which is, which is fine. Um, I bought these all from the same seller at different times, and they all came with Obies. You got a more basic Obi for this one, though. I think it's the, think it's the right Obi. Yeah. I should scan these in as well. Because I don't think any... I think maybe... Secret Service is on, on Discogs, but the other two aren't. Only the Taiwanese bootlegs. You have some interesting artwork. Probably not as good artwork in here compared to Secret Service's offerings in the booklet. But you still get some nice things. There's also just less um, vocal tracks in here, so it's a much thinner booklet. And that's it. Just a black back. Um, I mean, really, if we're talking vocal tracks, the only two that really stand out here... Um, well... There are any, there's, I think, oh, oh, we're good. There's only three, I think. Right on the Night, um, Black Roses, and Get Wild, 97 version. Um, all three of which are on YouTube, so if anyone's interested, they're all available. Same with, I should say, the vocal tracks for um, Secret Service. They're all pretty readily available. Um... And, I mean, of those three, they're all very good songs. Um, Memory of Black Roses and Emmy are real, like, high points. Goodbye My is pretty good, too. I think most of those are available on YouTube. The real standouts are available. Um, the Critical Moment's pretty good. Hurry Up's pretty funny. Open Your Eyes of Professor Muto are, are, are very good as well. Warlike, too. Uh, there's a fair few... It's very... It's a very good album. It's a very darker album, I would say, compared to Secret Service. And there's not very many high points. Uh, and it's just it's just overall nice. I think it represents the movie very well. Um, I think I've watched this one twice. I think I've watched Secret Service twice. So I'm going to be curious to re-listen to this as well and then re-watch the entire movie. Uh, because it'll be interesting to see where these sort of end up. But now, we have the Big Daddy. Death. Now, Death of Vicious Criminal Rio Sala. Also, terrible title, guys. Uh, it is a very hard CD to find under $200. 
Even in Japan, it seems to be pretty scarce. Granted, you can get it for better deals there. There is a guy selling them at the moment for about 120 Australian, and that's where I got this one. I sort of went, fuck it, it's a CD I've wanted for a while, and knowing this guy, it'll probably have the OV, so it's going to be complete. It did have the OV, which I'm actually very grateful for. Uh, this is probably one of the weirder soundtracks, because I haven't listened to it fully, properly yet. It just doesn't feel as cohesive as the other two. And I think that's also reflected in the fact that this movie was the last City Hunter movie, at least in 99, and it felt bizarre. It, it, it's very hard to explain, it just, just didn't flow nearly as well. And the ending was fucked. And I think that's represented well on this CD. Uh, and I'd also like to say, this CD is probably the least available of all of them online. There's, I think, four songs. I think you have the opening, the ending, and maybe some bits and pieces, but not a ton. You got a pretty clean blue CD. Pretty nice artwork. And the thinnest booklet yet. I mean, this is basically just a... It's literally four pages. Certification in Japanese, which I can't read, but if you can. There you go. I can barely remember the plot of this movie as it is, by the way. I, I seriously am confused as fuck every time I watch it. Some good artwork. But again basically over then <laughs> because I, I yeah that's right there's only two songs I think that actually have vocals which <laughs> brings us to the lowest amount I mean like I said uh, goodbye only had three but there's also some weird tomfuckery going on with this CD that I'd like to mention now that I know well now that I've mixed it or at least had a good look at it I should, oh, sorry, I just realized I didn't show you the Obi properly. Okay, so I think this has the most songs out of any of the CDs. Coming in at, no, it has 25, which is the most for any older City Hunter CD. Okay. But some of the songs are a couple of songs stitched together. TV music, I know for a fact, is three songs stitched together, which is a bit weird. Like, in terms of, it starts, ends, and then another one starts and ends in the same space. And then a couple others were like that too, where it's either two or three songs. So in reality, it's more like a 30-song um, album, 30 to 35. The lack of vocal tracks really hurts this album, because the instrumentals aren't terrible from what I've heard, and I can't really call out any to you in particular because I haven't listened to it properly but you know it, it kind of it just felt like we weren't really seeing any dedication in this sort of CD because again Illusion City you only get the TV size version as well it's really pushing you to buy the album that had Illusion City on it and again the only other one you get is Magnum Fire which I think is the ED although I'm not entirely sure I mean, overall, it's probably the worst CD release. It's intriguing because it's it's very interesting to see what the end represented. Um, but I would definitely say you don't you're not going to be missing much if you just listen to the OP and ED. Although TV music is mildly interesting. What brings us to the final CD, which arrived today? This is Shinjuku Private Eyes. Um, Keep it in this plastic little sleeve that it came in because it makes it, well, it keeps it safe because I thought it was a digipack at first. I was a bit livid, but it's not. It's just a slip cover. There's the Obi. And there's the slip. I don't think I'd ever prefer this cover too. That one's all right, but this just looks a bit cleaner. The CD is, whoa. What I really have to say about that, like, geez, that's very bright, very shiny, I should say. Uh, this weirdly is not available on any streaming services. Um, so this is this is also a really nice uh, matte cover rather than gloss, 
actually gives it a much better look. It's somewhat glossy, but it's, it's more got a matte feeling. Yeah, and that's really cute. And we've got the uh, lyrics to Mr. Cool, which is a, a really good reason to own this. Mr. Cool's on it. One of the better, uh, a really good OP. You've got a couple of, uh, uh, and you've got a couple of um, nice songs here. Uh, as for songs on this, now first thing I want to mention, actually I'm going to also put the OB inside here so that one will lose it. It won't fit. First thing I want to mention, the OB doesn't fit because it's designed for the slip cover. It doesn't fit in here, so if you want to store it that way it's very hard. Um, okay, first thing I want to mention, this is actually part of a two part CD. Because you sort of had, an, you had another one that had a lot of music from the original show. Uh, which was a very big part of this movie, and I think for some, in some aspects it was good, in others it was bad, because it kind of let things down a little bit, or it kind of felt like they were relying a little too much sometimes on the nostalgia. And nostalgia is a powerful thing, so I can't blame them entirely for that. Uh, and it's nice that we actually got a proper CD of original music. Granted, it's hard to find um, online. I think you could you could pretty much find Mr. Cool. Uh, I think most both versions are online, although the Mr. Cool long version is very bass boosted. It sounds a bit muddy. Um, I would definitely recommend picking this up, though. I haven't heard too much of it, but what I've heard has been pretty alright. And it comes across as a pretty nice action sort of soundtrack. Mr. Cool, both variants are great. You and My Hero is pretty good. And Cat's Eye is a very interesting modern take. I wouldn't say it surpasses the original, but I like it in other ways. And it's definitely intriguing from that perspective. And the package is really nice. I mean, this was the cheapest of all these CDs. It was cost me about 70 bucks. And, you know, for, I think, 31 songs, that ain't bad. That's pretty good value for $2 a song. And you compare that with, probably, which one would be the worst value? Don't know, but Goodbye is very expensive in the Japanese press. And that's the other thing. This this was also a Japanese press, which is not easy to get either. Um, so, we're back to the main reason I bought these, and that is sound quality. How do they sound compared to versions you could find online? Uh, pretty fucking good. Uh, that's that's the long and the short of it. They sound pretty fucking good. I mean, Shinjuku Private Eyes is pretty hard to find any of them, so it already sounds pretty good. And then these all sound a lot better than what's on YouTube, or at the least similar. Just because you're not dealing with YouTube compression. I was able to basically rat, um, rip these straight to WAVs and then chuck them into Audacity just some fiddling around and get them on my computer pretty easily. And I guess that's... that's that, but was it worth the, frankly, egregious nearly 300 to 350 bucks I spent on them? To me, yes, because I love this music, and it was just so much fun sort of getting them in and then listening, because you, you can't, you don't really know what to expect, but it is a lot of money to drop on CDs, and there is a chance they're going to re-release them, in which case these are basically, well, these ones are basically, their value gets tanked to an extent, but as it stands right now, I'm really glad to have these, and they're cool, and the music's intriguing. I think that's a reason enough to own them. I'm probably going to start buying some... I'm tempted just to go ahead and buy them all now. A lot of the CDs are relatively cheap, and it'd be nice to have a full collection, but that's something for me when I'm less broke. I'm also looking at Kimiguri Orange Road CDs. There's a 7 CD set that I really want, but I don't want to spend 600 bucks. Um, and talking about Kimiguri, that requires a whole other day. A whole other video, really, to discuss what the fuck's going on there, because it's it's pretty much as confusing. And it's way more confusing than this, I'd say. But that's all for today. Uh, thanks for tuning in for some bullshit. Uh, if anyone wants copies of these, just let me know, and I'll probably work something out for you. Um, just sort of, like, upload them somewhere. Because I don't, I'm not really fussed. Uh, but thank you all very much for watching. You understand up now? And I'll catch you in the next one.